Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Tech IT Podcast. I'm your host, Gregory, with my friend Mike here, and we're going to do a special deep dive breakdown into some of the tech icons that we have in our industry right now uh, that you may have heard in your own time on any platform of your choosing. We're going to try something different today with this breakdown as a kind of a new series for our little podcast here, as uh, we're going to go deep into the mind and uh, story and dealings of uh, Mr. Elon Musk. But before we get into that and all the stories that reside with that guy who's very renowned for his dealings in Tesla, SpaceX, and branches into other matters of the times that we are in today, such as cryptocurrency, uh, SNL hosting, and uh, research for environmental matters and awareness. Mike, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you today, Greg? I've been all right. Just uh, trying to manage all the snow here still while you're busy still in sunny Florida. Oh, I'm enjoying it down here. It's beautiful. So uh, it's <laughs> it's constant presence, but uh, that's why I get for being in the Midwest here. But uh, for those that aren't aware, for give us a brief mic on who this uh, Mr. Elon Musk is. Well, here's a brief history of. Uh... Elon Musk, he was born in 1971 in South Africa. Uh, and he was bit by the computer bug. And uh, he started out by writing uh, com- some code uh, for a video game. I think he sold it off to a magazine. So he's a fellow coder. Good on him for that. Okay. Um, he moved to Canada on his own when he was 17. And then he ended up uh, in the U.S. at the University of Pennsylvania, where he earned his degree in physics and business. He devoted the next, yeah. He devoted his next four years to a company he started, Zip Two. Um, so the Zip Two let him uh, let, let companies put uh, stuff on the internet, uh, like content, like uh, maps and direct directory listings. Uh, Musk he walked away with from Zip Two with twenty two million dollars at twenty eight years old. I'm a little bit jealous. I feel like I'm just I feel like I'm just starting out or I was just starting out at 28, you know. Um yeah. he founded a company called Xcom. Xcom merged with another company Confinity which had developed a service you have probably heard of, PayPal. And then uh, eBay came out and bought PayPal for 1.5 billion dollars in 2002. Now you guys can you can read the full history on sciencehowstuffworks.com slash Elon Musk one HTML or HTM. Um there's there's a lot more it goes a lot in depth into more of his history, but I thought that was a, a good start. Yeah, this is a guy that's been a hard working individual, no matter what side you stand with him as you listen to this, as we're gonna dive into some of the stories that have recently in the past two, three months, or even years, have gone into this individual known as Elon Musk. We're not going to get into personal details like his separation from his wife, Grimes, who is a alternative singer, like an alt-pop singer, or she does like experiments of music. And I'm not going to get into the whole <laughs> thing about his kid and how he named his kid kind of funny. With you know, yeah, that's remember that. Right? Life. I don't care what he does with his personal life. Like, uh, if you're asking so much of these figures about their kids and their relationship, I don't know what to tell you. But uh, who cares? Like, I don't, I don't get why people follow this stuff. Like, a personal life, just like paparazzi following them, waiting for them to trip up. <laughs> yeah, everyone makes mistakes and. We shouldn't dote on it. Let's go ahead and move on to uh, the first story, though, from from the news, from tech news, which is the the violated law that Elon Musk. They're saying that you violated some some laws here. Yeah, it's in the realm of uh, animal endangerment. So this is a bit of a trigger warning. As yeah, some of these stories will involve animal abuse as well as other matters of that serious nature for uh, actual people. So that's uh, forewarning you, everyone. But uh, according to the Hill.com, or as it's covered here, as I look at it, 
A doctor's group representing more than 17,000 physicians filed a complaint last week against the University of California. And uh, it's uh, going after the Neuralink program that was co-founded by Mr. Elon Musk, which we'll get into what Neuralink is later on, but they're saying that he was, quote, invasive, unused, deadly brain experiments on 23 monkeys. And that quote, he failed to provide dying monkeys with adequate veterinary care. Despite this being adamant, Neuralink in short, that we'll get into later again, is a neural technology company developing brain machine interfaces to have content basically poured into our mind. As a, no pun intended, they've actually poured $1.4 million at the project, according to a committee that they reached out to. Uh, it's a rough realm dealing with animals already, because I know a great deal amount of people in my life and circles that already don't like when companies test on animals. That goes as far back as the cosmetics industry, which that's a whole conversation in itself. But, uh, Jeremy Beckham, a research advocacy coordinator for the Physicians Committee that brought this up, said that the documents reveal that the monkeys had their brains mutilated and shoddy experience and were left to suffer and die. That's and, pretty uh, bad. The, uh, this is bold claims for this, as this could potentially, again, as he follow ups with, could violate federal animal welfare laws. And he doesn't want this publicly funded facility to evade transparency requirements, as well as everything involved with lab testing, which is already something, again, very, very complicated to get into as uh, the same committee has filed another public records lawsuit on Mr. Musk's company to obtain video and photographic evidence documenting how the monkeys are treated. And, uh, yeah, so far it's not looking good for Elon Musk if uh, this stuff is actually true. Well, from the beginning, this is all for his uh, project Neuralink. And I don't know if there's any other way to test, because like, they wanted to start testing on humans soon. I don't know if there's any other way to test the feasibility of Neuralink or the the way that the brain, like a human brain would react to such a thing if implanted in in like one skull so this is i don't know i don't think i ever want like something implanted in my skull even if it was like the way in the future or whatever um but i think like i think if it if it's required like if, if you need it to like survive then maybe like what was it was he trying to cure i think the the health benefits might might be something to look at but not for just like everyday use not for like hey i want to connect to my phone and i don't know whatever you want to do connect to your phone for i think that's even though it seems like it's moving forward i think there, there's got to be less invasive ways to do this yeah so even if it's far than i do try to steer away from this and just try to get things forward and just uh, move away from testing from on these animals if this goes further into court system as uh, I've seen him test this same product on pigs, which everyone found quote unquote quirky in one video I watched back in 2020, a year that again, I don't want to remember. So uh, that's the most I recall from that, where he just kind of said, look everyone, I put a chip in a pig's head, look. And it was like, oh, wow, oh. But uh, seems like the, the wool is starting to get pulled up from under the uh, investor and must eyes here potentially, but much like well, our series. Yeah, let's go ahead and hop into our next. Uh, uh, what's the next story? The racial discrimination one. Yeah. So we're on tech even though, Yeah, even though Elon Musk is also prided himself as being kind of a new age boss because he says he doesn't even require a high school diploma to get a job at Tesla or SpaceX. Which that's that's already nice in itself. I know some hard workers in my life that I've met that have never gotten a diploma, college, high school, or either. But that being said, as this TechCrunch piece by Rebecca Bat Bellin puts it, which you can follow at TechCrunch.com. Yeah, 
The California Department of Fair Employment and Housing has filed a lawsuit against Tesla just last Wednesday, alleging racial discrimination and harassment. It was this complaint was filed in the state court, which calls out issues at Tesla's Fremont, California manufacturing plant, which they said have received at this agency hundreds of complaints from workers about a segregated workplace where work black workers are subjugated to racial slurs and discriminated against and assignments discipline and pay. According to the director of the and the, excuse me, according to the director of the agency, Kevin Kish, in a statement to the Wall Street Journal, which this is the first time that uh, racial discrimination has been brought up, Mike. Actually, it was back in 2017 that it was hit with a class action lawsuit that I believe they settled with a Mr. Marcus Vaughn, where he alleged Tesla failed to investigate complaints of this worker, Mr. Vaughn, being called the N-word by his managers and co-managers, hmm. which they ordered. They were ordered then Tesla to pay $137 million damages, which... Uh, it's good to see that uh, Tesla is actually paying out money to these people that feel yeah. like they've been wronged. Because I know, I know that a lot of people are afraid to like go after uh, big companies because they were afraid they won't get what they deserve. Um, I remember back when I was employed at a company, uh, and I got laid off because of my religion. I was afraid to go after them because I didn't think I'd get anywhere. Um, so remember, guys, if you if you've ever been wronged, and make sure you take the right actions to you know get what you deserve this this well, is a big issue same, nowadays right? and i think it's 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 just getting more light and people are actually like coming through and be like hey you've been wronged and we'll you know give you what you deserve for you know this this incident so it's kind of sad that in the past this kind of has kind of been washed over and people have kind of like swept it under the rug under the rug oh, yeah and uh it's good to see that more and more this is, you know, people are getting their, uh, you know, and it's kind of sad that we even have to have this this conversation. You know, it's kind of sad that yeah, we... This, this even is a recent story, so that's why I want to cover it, but it's sad that this is still happening in 2022. Like, it sounds like something that would have been happening in, like, the 40s and 50s. Yeah, and like, how hard um, is it to just treat other people with respect? Like, it's... Golden just, rule, man. Golden yeah, golden rule. rule. Come on. Like, I and learned like, that when I was five guys like please like and like back, all you this just was, to end it this happened to me back what like five ten years ago or something like that and i know it was at like a construction company where i was laid off because of my religion but this this is this is depressing this is sad that i was like hey it's whatever like it was like t 2012 i'm like this this should not be happening in 2012 and now we're still hit, sitting here 2020 what is it 2021 2022 whatever some of these are from 2017. We're still sitting here complaining about the same stuff, and it feels like nothing's changed. That's what it feels like. It feels like nothing's changed. But it's glad to see that people are getting uh, getting paid for this. But I really wish that companies could crack down and you know get people just to treat people fairly and with respect. Yeah, um, to just treat them the way they want to be treated, and just invite more diversity in a non-forceful manner to work at your environment, be it be it a tech giant like Tesla or something even more than that or whatever they want to do as uh, to kind of nip this story in the bow because this is still an ongoing issue at many companies, so I don't want to discount that. Tesla actually published its first diversity report in December of 2020, which, uh, and these are the numbers here in the report, so if they're wrong, then, uh, this is the most Tesla's given its piece. This report has suggested that it showed that 10% of the U.S. workforce at Tesla is African American, and at the director, uh, director or management level, it's only 4%, which uh, that's kind of bad, given uh, that full report with also Hispanic and Latinx employees being 22%. And Asians making up 21% while the rest of it's Caucasian. Which, um, those numbers could be better. 
I'll I'll say that much. As uh, this is an ongoing story, and he tried to dodge it himself by moving his facility and headquarters from California to Austin, Texas, which, in a way, sadly, it kind of worked with some of the suits being dropped, as he was in a different state where they kind of have different laws regarding work. But uh, I don't know what else to say about this piece. Yeah, definitely something to keep an eye on. Make sure you. Uh... Don't be afraid to speak to, up, people. Really, yeah, speak up. Speak up. I could go on this for hours because I have a lot of frustrations about this, but we have to keep going into uh, some of Elon Musk's uh, achievements and some of his uh, ideals or ideas for new technology. So let's just start off with the, the Musk phone, as, as I like to call it. Um, so there's a TikTok out there uh, that is like, it's kind of like a demo for the phone. I don't know if all of this is final, but uh, they talked briefly about uh, no broken screens in the future. So they're saying that this, if you drop this phone, it won't the screen won't shatter. You won't have to get a new screen protector. You know, whenever you drop your phone. Um, nice. They talked about high quality cameras. They said there's four cameras on the back, and then a high spec camera on the front, and they're all controlled with AI. It, the big this is this is my favorite. This next one is solar charging, where the back of the phone has a solar panel in it, so it can charge off uh, the sun's rays. So any any light that hits this phone is going to charge it up. Which I've always had trouble keeping my phone charged because I always have so much stuff running in the background or or whatever. And sometimes it's just an old phone and the battery's running out. So this is going to be a godsend for those of us that don't want to carry a charger around. It will be the first time. story here that involves the sun and. Uh... Elon Musk products, but uh, continue. Yeah, um, and the next one is Starlink uh, satellite internet. So they're saying that it's going to have uh, Elon Musk's Starlink, which he said he's providing to everyone for free, right? Yeah, so to those who don't know, Starlink, in short, is a proposed internet service similar to those that are involved in LTE or with broadband and companies like at and and Verizon. Elon Musk is trying to differentiate himself, come, come a contrarian here, which has kind of been his theme. It's probably going to be his theme for like the rest of this episode, being contrarian, either just because he likes it or because he actually feels it. But regardless. Yeah, I think Starlink still has a little way to go. I think they tested it on like Linus Tech Tips. And it still has a long way to go to like game on, but I think for general searching, it's it's okay. But does this mean that like now that you have satellite internet, does is this the end of all providers? Like if you can call someone on Discord via your phone and everyone can get Discord, yeah. This this is it like hey, be. I'm not going to spend whatever like ridiculous amounts of money on phone service, right? So yeah. I'll, let's cross our fingers for that one. I'm wondering about how this can play into the long span of things because I've been reading a lot of tech industry books lately about how the future could potentially be with uh, AI and robots as well as stuff like Starlink that involves stuff in space, providing technology through space. As uh, people have been always been looking up into space for new innovation that we can do in it besides, you know, go to a planet and uh, then some. So. It's been an intriguing thing that have been on people's minds as well, as well as people that, like me that don't like monopolies, but kind of, uh, in a way, rooting for Starlink as like a way to just be the guy that drinks the orange juice instead of the milk gets at breakfast. Uh, and I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> no, but, uh, I get you. I get you. Well, moving on, let's have a look at the next two part, uh, the next two uh, ideals for this phone, which are Neuralink and Mars Coin. So Neuralink is we talked about earlier. It's a device that's implanted in your skull and can you can communicate <laughs> with your phone. So this is this just sounds nuts. I'm like, I'm not gonna get this. I don't know who. Maybe I don't like know how safe this is, people. So maybe you're real enthusiast and you're like, yeah, I'm getting Neuralink and I'm getting the 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 Musk phone and I'm getting the Tesla and then I'm also going to have the the was it city light or the the solar panels for Musk on my house and yeah. I don't know so like a poster of Elon Musk outside my my own walls <laughs> so I don't know we'll keep an eye and see what happens and then Mars coin so they're saying this is didn't isn't Elon Musk's coin called Dogecoin 
Well, he endorses it. It's not like his own coin. It's someone else's, but Mars coin is, I guess, something that he's going to incorporate into the phone. Which, so apparently, uh, I think he's saying that you mine Mars coin on the phone, and then you can like um, use it to pay for stuff. Uh huh. I think that's what they're trying to put through with this with this um this viewing of like the uh, of the phone, and I think I I don't know if this is all like set in stone yet. So I'm taking all everything I see here with a grain of salt, except for the solar charging. I think that's that's what's going to sell the phones. Yeah, I like, think that and the satellite internet will sell the phones. I mean, well, if well, those are I still know. two new ideas, as well as mining Bitcoin on a phone. I think which... the broken, for me, it's the broken no, the no broken screens, which I'm kind of taking with a grain of salt as well. But like, oh yeah, like a cup. That's of salt. true. A cup of salt. If that's true, then like that will sell the phone along with the solar charging. I think, I think we have to find out if it's true that. They're offering Starlink to all the phones for free. Like if if we can get if we can get a confirmation from like Musk, the man himself, for that, <laughs> then yeah, that will be the top in the top three. Because like I'm like I'm still you know I'm still yeah a big salt on that one. <laughs> big 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 handles of salt here, people. As a uh, <laughs> we'll look into this definitely in the future episodes, no doubt. As a uh, again, we're all going through Elon Musk stuff here, so. He's always been contrarian and a man for innovation, but also he's had some baggage on his back. And uh, we're going to decipher by the end of this episode on what we think of him. But we're getting to one of the quirks of his here as a, you actually told me about this story a week ago about how he sold his big house or mansion, as the lay people would call it, to live in a tiny home. Yeah, a bunch of billionaires. They have like, like all these big houses, right? They have like, Houses, cars, they do it up, you know, if they have a billion dollars, right? Yeah. Which which most people would. But he he sold all of his man I think he keeps one for like it for like big business like events or whatever, right? Yeah. Like and he like rents it out too. But like what he sold his main his main house driver, I I don't know, his main house. And he lives in a tiny house. Um uh, that he bought for fifty K from was it? Uh, it's Boxable. Is this the name of the company? Yeah, B O X A B L. If you're out there and want to also buy a tiny house, honestly, I've been interested in it. I've like I've been doing some research, and there's there's all kinds of houses at all kinds of prices, and Boxables looks really nice. Of course, they furnish it every, and everything, like so. It's, it looks really nice because it's furnished, but it's. It's really cool on the inside. Like, there's two stories, and I don't know. It just it seems really cool, and like compared to a lot of the other tiny houses, which um, seem kind of simple. This one has a lot to it, so I think it's one of the higher end uh, tiny boxes. It's environmentally friendly, it's and yeah, extremely energy efficient. Boxable claims. The whole point to it is it's. It lowers your carbon f- footprint by a lot, so that's why Musk did it. And I'm like, and that's why I've been looking into it. I'm like, this is really cool. And like, they're showing like, if you want to go to the the website greenmatters.com/slash/p/slash/elon musk tiny house, it like it has all these images and videos and stuff, just kind of like showing how it like unfolds and whatnot. And it looks really cool. So that's why he's got matches it because. They did update this piece just back in December of last year where he sold his last mansion to for $30 million. Even though he still has one house for big events in the Bay Area, whatever that means for him, like big events. But uh, in concept, the open concept casita home is approximately 375 square feet in size. If you want to just try to base that from wherever you're listening to this, as to how big that is. And it's essentially a side of a studio farm, but it's big enough to fit going to this again, the living area, the bedroom area again. Here, your mic's going, uh, it's going robot y. And um, eating kitchen, bathroom. Oh, that's not like enough. Yeah, your your mic's getting better, but um, 
Yeah, so this is just a cool story that we put in there that we uh, that we thought was really cool and uh, was interesting and was good to get out there because t tiny houses are really taking off um, and it might be something for you guys to look into, especially if you're looking for a new house. Let's uh, jump into Starlink and SpaceX. Um, so the first story is from TikTok. Or I, I first saw it on TikTok, and it's just uh, like a video of what looks like an asteroid burning up in the ash atmosphere. Um, and then the next story kind of goes with it. It talks about the 40 satellites that uh, got hit by a solar storm and are falling out of orbit, which is which kind of sucks. Uh, it's a little bit depressing because. Uh, we had high hopes for for the Starlink. I set the project back a bit as a like the coin to the guy at TikTok, he said they could be valued at a hundred billion dollars that just flew out of space and just got disevaporated in the atmosphere. I think so, he's overestimating that price a little bit. Yeah, I, I think I've been. I think that someone said there were less than a million dollars per satellite and it was only 40 when that fell out. So maybe like 40 million at the most. But still, it is a big hit to his company. And uh, I mean, this this isn't the first time he had failures in his, no. in his business and industry. Uh, I'm sure he'll bounce back from it. And uh, he kind of took it with like, hey, this is a learning experience. We're going to learn from what happened here. It's kind of hard to predict, you know, the, the solar... Like whatever the the solar flashes, what are they called? Solar sunspots, something like that. But it's kind of hard to protect the ones yeah, that spike flare. up. It's hard to protect solar flares, and um, this will help them determine in the future how to uh, like avoid a situation like this. So I think that's a good standpoint to have on this. Yeah, the head of space weather within NASA's division has said in this piece that the data from this loss of forty satellites has a silver lining to it that the data will help NASA and the NOAA to observe and improve how space weather modeling can be more aligned to ongoing matters for the, for the future. You know? So Yeah, I agree. So let's go ahead and jump in uh jump into the cars. Tesla cars. Uh, I've probably seen these before. cars around these Model T cars or Tesla cars or what have you. The cars like with the T thing. on the front of them. I think this is the main thing that uh, Elon's known for is a Tesla. Oh, um, yeah. But the, the story that we have on the Tesla cars is uh, an, an accident involving uh, was it the, the braking? Yeah, dangerous and unreasonable suspension. It caused a failed crash just last year as a lawsuit is now being filed against Tesla in Florida over an alleged suspension failure. So they did go a little bit deeper into this. They did recall this Model 3 Tesla as a, this is the first time the Model 3 has had issues with people as a, according to the lawsuit, Nicholas G. Garcia Brought the Model 3 into a Tesla store four days before the accident occurred, signed Thomas Breath. You might be fuzzy again. So I'll, I'll finish that up. Yeah, he brought in the, the car for like a routine checkup, and he was, he was mentioning something wrong with the, the, was it the steering? I think it was the steering and uh, the braking. And they looked into it and uh, said there's nothing wrong. And uh, then they went out and got into a crash. So um, they're saying that the service mag manager uh, was negligent in inspecting the vehicle, which is kind of sad. Um, so it it's not exactly the car. It, you can blame the car for maybe maybe parts that don't last as long. Of course, you can blame that on any car nowadays. Days, but um, I think the big issue is making sure that everyone, all the inspections, go through to code. So I think Elon needs to 
to like either get some new people in the or just have another process like either replace the people that are being negligent or have a new process where more than one or two people go and do the inspection just to make sure that everything's up to code so as a result of this or i don't know if it is a result of this but Tesla themselves recalled nearly 3,000 Model 3 S's and Model Y's in the U.S. over the suspension issue just in 2021, as they also further recalled 21,599 in China over the same issue. About, and I'm not the one for knowing about cars, but they said that the suspension link could fall out of the steering knuckle under extreme stress conditions. Oh. So I don't know how well that fares with uh, everything with Tesla and that matter going forward here. But well, hopefully, fun. hopefully they get it worked out because I I like the idea of having Teslas out there. I like the idea of um, seeing more and more Teslas come out and everybody, you know, just in general, having electric cars on the on the road is good for the environment. So hopefully they get their their uh, stuff figured out because they're the biggest. I think they're what are they the biggest seller of of electric cars? Yeah, I've so seen you... people trying to get in the foray of electric cars. Like during the Super Bowl, they had uh, five commercials that counted for other companies like Toyota, Hyundai, Honda getting into electric trucks, especially so that you know us those boomers out there can get their. <laughs> Sixty thousand dollars in line to get an electric car truck. Well, I think first I'm going to go with the tiny house, and then I'll probably because I don't use my car as much as I use the house. You know. Yeah, you're you always got to come back to the house. Like there's going to be days where you don't go in the car. Right. So, um, but let's go and press on more more stuff about houses. But just the top of your house, Solar Cities. So this is a a video I watched on YouTube, uh, just about the. Because I I was very I'm very interested in in solar power, and so Solar Cities is a project that Elon's been working on for a while. So I think his original his original I proposal or whatever it was to have an entire city just run on solar, right? Um, it kind of transferred into like just offering solar panels for the roofs of house houses, but they weren't up to like the demo. The demo was like solar shingles, like really like stylistic solar shingles and they're not there yet um but there were a fair amount of complaints for, about the systems and uh the customer support uh just for the systems so i'm kind of sad that this is still kind of far behind and it's been so long since he's been pushing this idea because no. solar is a big would be a big help to the environment like if if you guys don't know, like we still use a lot of fossil fuels. We still use coal. There's still like stuff like I mean, we still we also have alternative energy like wind power, hydropower. We have we do have some solar farms out there, but I think solar is going to be like our our big one for the future. And that will um, not uh, die out. It's always going to be in there. Right, and it's just there's just so much potential for it out there. So and hopefully. In this Despite the oh. comments section of this being kind of mixed in terms yeah. of uh, the solar farm technique. Yeah. As some are saying they prefer the traditional service mounted panels and that uh, a great deal of complaints about the costs as well as how they think Tesla should just focus on batteries and leave solar out of it and just focus on the cars first, which that's kind of harsh. But, uh, <laughs> I don't know. As someone that's barely in the business, it sounds kind of harsh on the outside going like, hey, I don't want you doing that. Stick to this only. Don't branch out. No, I think branching out is good, but I think the problem is uh, there's just a lot of competition out there when it comes to solar. There's a lot of other companies uh -huh. that offer solar and at competitive prices. And with all the um, with all the customer support issues, that it's kind of hard to choose the the Musk plan over someone else's. Um, 
so they need to build up a like a, a support infrastructure to just answer all their questions and go out there and do repairs and and installations so i think they they uh they teamed up with a a roof a roofer company to do a lot of the installations and it takes them a lot longer to do installations because they're installing like all this solar panels and whatnot and it's people are complaining about it, but i mean it's kind of a new thing so it is going to take longer and i think people just kind of have to expect it to take longer i think one way that they can uh they can mitigate the issues is not only uh providing teams to people to answer questions and do repairs and make sure everything's up to date is they need to they need to make sure that they're um I'm sorry, I'm losing my train of thought. It was something about the infrastructure. Oh, they and, get and their scope sorted out. They need to have like a better refund policy or like a better, like maybe, uh, like you know how you e get those. Yeah, just something like they people need to feel comfortable with the, their payment plans and their because, like, it's a huge investment when you're, I think they're talking about $70,000 or and up for these, uh, putting, putting in solar panels. So people want to feel comfortable with their investments. So even if they get a little bit running out of time or uh, just have like uh, a better payment plan just so that people aren't paying uh, like $70,000 off the bat or just having this huge debt over them, maybe they're starting starting small and working their way up. I don't know. There's there's a lot of things they could do to make this better. And I hope they get on it because I think this is an important aspect of the business and uh, the uh, the environment. But enough Speaking about that. Of, I could go. I can go on investments. I can go on for hours about Solar City. So the next one, do you want to um, hop in that one and talk about Neuralink? Yeah. So speaking of new investments and installations, or this isn't an installation on your roof; it's more of in your mind. But uh, like we said at least two times already, there is an idea that Elon Musk has that he plans to uh, input chips in the brains of us to help treat neurological disorders. Or as some jokes put it, stream Spotify into your head, which uh, that that's not. Don't don't use that as like a meme. <laughs> that's what this is. This is a uh, this is a very intricate thing. Like Tesla is caveman work compared to this. I that's mean, do you doing. want do you want Spotify in your head, Greg? I don't want bring me the horizon in my head all day. I do not want, and I mean, if you don't have premium Spotify, do you want all those ads in your head? You want those ads for, like those, uh, like hair growing pills, like in your <laughs> head, right when you're in the middle of listening to a good session, with you oh, and your man. partner, and like That'd you're listening to Neuralink heads. But to kind of sum this up again, it's he put he brought up this uh, startup in 2019. It was poised to get human clinical trials started soon on these. But so far, he's also captured flack, again, for testing on, like I said earlier, the pigs and the monkeys, which we talked about first in this video, where I guess there's a video, if you're interested, it's on usatoday.com, of uh, the inputted links, not inputted, embedded links, where two monkeys are playing Pong, like the video game Pong, with a... Uh, <laughs> No, yeah, the video game Pong with his mind. Like, no hands, his mind. Which, uh... Kind of freaky. <laughs> I, I don't know how into that you people are with that, but... There's people that have drawn comparisons with, uh... Uh, the show Black Mirror. As this sounds something sounds like coming... Something kind of, uh... Not favorable in terms of innovation, but... I'll give them points for it being bold, but... Definitely bold. It's bold and dynamic. Like, I haven't heard another mind come up with this idea besides uh, other th stuff I've seen, like uh, those this shoes they like, don't have to bend over to put on. It sounds like something you see in sci-fi, right? Yeah, like a Star Trek episode. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I've been watching that lately at, at night when I'm alone. Are you watching, like, the old Star Trek? Oh, yeah, Next Generation and the old, old Star Trek with William Shatner overacting. Nice. I think, I, watched, them. I think I watched a few episodes. Like, I can't remember which one it was. But yeah, it, 
it's kind of it's kind of fu funny to see like how like or kind of cool to see how far we come and kind of funny to see it, like the differences in the actors. Uh, it's it's just I, I liked it. I I gotta go back and watch some more. Uh, yeah. So back more to that. the neural link here, which even though like I said, it sounds like something Star Trek could make. There have been people again that have been making a trend on Twitter about how this shows the dark side of technology. You know, this could have helpings, have the helpings and resided in solving paralysis and par paraplasia in many different people and individuals. This also has the darker nature of technology, the yin and yang, so to speak, when it comes to technology sometimes. And uh, we'll look at this more as updates go in, as this is one of the most innovative and controversial things I've seen come to light in my time since graduating from Kent State. I'd be interested to see like how many people actually want this. <laughs> oh yeah, I'd like to see a poll on who wants this and yeah. that, besides uh, you want all Reddit. this on Twitter or something. How many of you want my how many my... of you trolls on Twitter and Reddit want this? No, I'm joking, <laughs> but <laughs> um to, so to tie so our last story next... together. Yeah. Is uh we're gonna try to discuss on what how we should decipher Elon Musk because despite the company setbacks, including Subjects like discrimination and potentially mis uh, not giving the best credence for animals in his testing, as well as maybe stock market manipulation that I think I've gone into before earlier in other episodes where he can tweet something like, I want to sell my stock. Should I do it? And they're like, yes, yeah, sell it. And then he sold it. And then the SEC got upset. But, uh, to tie this all together as to where we should put this man, he was named Elon Musk, that is, according to the magazine Time, which you probably have heard of, Mike and others yeah. out there listening. Elon Musk was named the 2021 Person of the Year. Now, what is your response to that overall, Mike, without taking these other stories into mind as they also, as they nominated this guy as, as a uh, time gives his title to the person or people who have most affected the news or our lives for good or ill. And I'm buying what was the most important about that year for better or for worse. Do you think Elon Musk fits that? Um, did you say without the stories or with the stories? Cause with the stories, I say, See, he's one of those back and forth people. Where like, hey, he does something really good, but then he kind of does something sus. I'm kind of for him though. Yeah, like, I'm a big very environmental. Smart, I'm big on the environmental side. I think we should all be reducing our carbon footprint. I think the solar phone is really going to help that too. So I'm always for him, and I think he deserves the limelight just for that, and not just for that. Like his his uh, like just based on the brief history about him. I think uh, it's, he definitely deserves to be recognized. I mean, this is a title that's been given to other people, like the previous year, 2020, they gave the title to uh, President Joe Byron or, and uh, Kamala Harris, as well as other people like the likes of Jamal Khashoggi and Greta Thunberg, who are renowned for their work in journalism and environmentalism alike. So, yeah, this piece by NPR.org kind of sums up what we've been talking about, how he's kind of, he keeps tiptoeing between, am I Paragon or, or Renegade? <laughs> That's a Mass Effect joke. I get it. And uh, he's done uh, numerous sorts of things, such as uh, the other day, actually, I forgot to put the story in, but he actually uh, compared Justin Trudeau, the Prime Minister of Canada, to uh, uh, Hitler on uh, Twitter, which he since deleted, but uh, people had fun screenshotting that while it was up and kind of making their own assumptions about what he meant by that. But he has, uh, he has a lot of strong opinions, doesn't he? Yeah, he's a controversial and vocal person on Twitter with over 66 million followers. <laughs> and uh, again, he's had his, his, his battles 
again, he's has he's probably going to face more battles that I haven't even covered yet, or will soon happen this year, as we're only two months into this year. But uh, this is a guy that also hosted SNL that I think personally was one of the worst episodes I ever watched. As someone that's into stand-up comedy, I thought his episode was objectively bad. Oh no, I and, didn't uh, watch it. You can look it up worked. online. It's just on YouTube. Back when they had dislikes up, you can see the dislikes for all of the segments they did, which included one called Gen Z Hospital, where they threw in they threw in uh, phrases like "sus" or "sussy baka" and uh, <laughs> cri- "crypto crypto god uh, shoot for the moon." Uh, it, it was kind of bad, but uh, hey, maybe you like it. I don't know. Yeah, but uh, maybe I'll check it out. <laughs> to, all in all, I think it makes sense why he's Time Person of the Year, as encapsulates by definition why time picks someone for better or for worse for their cover as it was just i think years back why they made us like just general people the person of the year Hmm. even though i've seen many people rally for having first just having first responders be the cover of time magazine which i think would have been better in all also but no they should do that that'd be good like they they could do that like Give help and better wages and better pay and benefits, please, to first responders. Oh we no should... doubt. And not just say, we put them on the cover of a magazine. We're done. That's a can of worms. Like, if we give that to those people, then we should also give that to teachers. Honestly, free health care. We need free health care for Bernie? everyone. Where's Bernie at? <laughs> help me. Everyone help. gets free health care. Everyone um, free health care. Come on. We're like Canada. Oh, wait. Mills doesn't like Canada. <laughs> right now but to to nip this all together mike do you think that uh elon musk has many shades of gray about him like i do i think he's definitely someone to keep an eye on uh for better for worse i think yeah some definitely some shades of gray in there i don't think there's as many as like the big headlines want you to want you to believe i think a lot of it's just like hey steal your attention kind of stuff. A lot of, yeah, like, just, yeah. I think he overall he's trying to do good. Um, I think he does make some dumb decisions. I th- he's only human, right? As we all right. are, he's only human. You're gonna, everyone's going to make some mistakes. Like, he's, he like, is I only think, human. I mean, we'll probably I, cover other people in this new series of ours that are anti-human. I'm not the name people Twitter, Zuckerberg. But, the Twitter poll could have happened to anyone because, like, if, like, when I thought about that at first, I'm like, oh, yeah, who cares? He, like, not everyone's gonna follow what he puts on Twitter. <laughs> 66 million people are gonna look at it. <laughs> that's not everyone. 66 right. million isn't everyone, people. Not everyone so, does. No, not everyone looks at Twitter and be like, hey, I'm gonna do exactly what Twitter tells me to do. I don't know. That's just right. my opinion, but, uh, I think we're, I think we're all wrapping up for today. I think we've got through a lot of material. And, yeah, uh, so, uh, Thank you, everyone, for listening, wherever you are in the world, be it uh, outside, inside, upside down, in the car, in the store. I don't know. Yeah, we or appreciate just you. Thank on you for the go, listening. listening to this. If you like it, please give us a share, a like on SoundCloud or YouTube once we upload this, which I should should, should be done before this weekend's over. I, I'm going to try to. And but, check uh, us out. Oh, yeah. yeah. Respire as well. It's it's a big win. Feel free to give us any feedback as well, as we're also always constantly listening and learning as uh, we try to give you the tech news that the world outside likes to forget because they're too busy talking about other things like the green m M&M m being sexy or not. Why is that a topic? <laughs> Why is that a topic? I'm, uh, regardless, stay vigilant out there, everyone. Agreed. Stay vigilant. Thank you for listening. Peace.